And just like that, the winter switch has been flipped. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is with you in this video. We're going to talk about big snows coming for us in the Plains, Great Lakes, and the West, courtesy of two systems. One of them, a big behemoth system that's going to take a lot of, a lot of the country. And on the southern end of that system, rolling through the Plains and Great Lakes, we could have a very active, severe weather day on Thursday and especially again on Friday. Behind that system, we talked about this when it came to the Dolphins and Chiefs game out in Kansas City in yesterday's video, but a huge Arctic blast is going to arrive. Wind chills could be pushing 50 or 60 degrees below zero in parts of the northern plains. We are going to break that down. Before we get into the video, if you do want to stay updated on these snowstorms and the rest of what is to come this winter and beyond, you've come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button for me. If you happen to find this content helpful, give me a thumbs up. I want to know where you're watching from, what kind of weather you're expected to get. Post that in the comments for me, and let's get to it. I first want to just start here by showing you this crazy National Weather Service map here. These are all of the different watches, warnings, advisories that in play, and there's very minimal states that are missing out on anything right now. All the brown you see here encompassing uh, the deep south up to the Ohio River Valley here, these are wind advisories in that brown color, so the wind is going to crank up. As we move to the pink, those are winter storm warnings uh, towards for us in Iowa, into eastern Nebraska, southern Minnesota, into Wisconsin, into parts of Illinois, just west of Chicago. I think we're going to get some snow in Chicago. We're going to break it down in just one second. Boise, you see that red? That's a blizzard warning for southern Idaho. We have more winter storm warnings for the northern side of Idaho into western Montana and then also into Portland. The higher elevation is going to get crushed, even in the lower elevation. Do you see that blue color? Let me bring out my trusty arrow. These are winter storm watches. So Portland, we're going to be in that as well. There's a lot going on. Oh, yeah, the light blue, all this right here, that is a wind chill uh, warning. We have wind chill watches in play in the green there that does include kansas city again we keep on talking about it for what is likely going to be that crazy cold maybe one of the coldest nfl games ever played in kansas city on saturday evening so we're going to start things off kind of encompassing the whole thing here this is going to be the high resolution future radar to kind of pinpoint both systems here and just to give you a wide view and then we're going to get into the nitty-gritty talk about how much snow could fall and then break down that severe weather threat i'll have the description i'll have the time codes in the description in case you want to bounce around to different parts of the video but there you go. There is 5 o'clock. So we're going to watch this closely. I'm looking at you guys in Chicago because it's going to be really, really finicky to see if we're going to keep this all snow. And I do think there's going to be a period where we switch things over to rain. But again, you want to be, if you want snow anyway, you want to be on the northwest side of the low. You don't want to be under the low track, certainly. You don't want to be east of the low track because that means you get all that warm air surging up. And that's going to be meaning a mix or some rain. But you see it there sliding through uh, Minneapolis. We have the atmospheric river, the moisture kind of streaming into the to the uh, Pacific side you see that right here so some heavy snow by Friday at five o'clock in the morning through the Cascades also kind of a dicey commute here in parts of Iowa Wisconsin Illinois and southern Minnesota uh, to start off your Friday so just keep that in mind all right so here is the deal with the low track and again we are watching this closely the low kind of bends out over towards St. Louis and then southern Illinois Here's the deal with this. I think we start to get some warmer air trying to sneak up into Chicago, but then the low kind of pivots, heads towards southern Indiana into Ohio, and then that's going to wrap around some cold air again. So you notice here, even in Detroit, Michigan, it looks like now with the latest, some of the latest model data that we might have enough cold air to get a little bit uh, something anyway that's not rain, so some snow in a mix. But it's going to be really up here, big ticket snowfall totals into Wisconsin, uh, into northern Michigan, into Minnesota, uh, into parts of Illinois, especially northwest Illinois, and then a lot of Iowa going to get the uh, very, very heavy snow. There's all the heavy rain sliding up to the I-95 corridor. Again, we're missing out on this one. We actually talked about this system two weeks ago, how the pattern was going to be. Again, not this system in particular. Again, it wasn't born yet. We don't do that kind of, hey, a model showing up on the 384 GFS like some of the others do on YouTube. We dissected the actual pattern, and we talked about that if a storm got brewing, this one, it would be an inland runner, as we call it, towards the Great Lakes and just kind of cut up through, giving uh, the northeast limited snow. And you see it there again, unless you're in Maine or upstate New York or into the higher elevations of Vermont and New Hampshire, this one is going to be uh, mainly rain for you. Notice some, there's the snow coming back into Nevada into northern california the snow and the higher elevations that's going to be on saturday morning 
and that thing finally spirals out, but then Storm 2 comes in. Again, this just blasts Northern California and a lot of Oregon. So there is a lot of heavy snow to come in that part of the country for us in the West. Here are the latest snowfall projections. This is the straight-up Euro model. I chose the Euro because I believe this in terms of of what could actually fall. Again, Chicago, we're watching you closely. You have the potential to get a little bit less or a little bit more, but I do think this is going to be good. I think we are, relatively speaking, in a favorable spot. I think the best spot favorability-wise for the kind of crushing snow here, getting a foot more, it's really going to be right in through here. So Madison, Wisconsin, up into Green Bay. That's the sweet spot right there as the low kind of works its way here and then treks up in that direction. That's why... Detroit might be able to get a little bit of something early on, but then we are on the wrong side of the low, and then the cold air kind of hangs on into northern Michigan. So that is the big storm number one on the cold side. Here is the other system, that atmospheric river that just kind of sends that moisture right on into the western side of the country. So Boise, we could be pushing a foot of snow. And again, remember, not only do we have the snow coming down here, we have the wind to go with it. So it's just going to be terrible to drive out there. Blizzard conditions, again, blizzard warnings are up. And then a foot or more of snow in the parts of the Cascades and in the Sierras. Look at this, Portland, we could get up. To seven inches of snow, maybe not that much, but I do think we could be into that four to eight inch category. Again, it's going to be a lot of snow coming down the pipeline, uh, kind of on the rarer side that we see snow in the lower elevations, but that's what we are going to be up against with that colder air coming in. So transitioning now to the cold part of the system, this is kind of a three-parter, the snow, the cold, and then the severe on the warm side. And we'll get into the severe weather threat uh, for the rest of today and for the rest of, and for Friday coming up in just one second. But I want to show you the, the temperatures. And these are the actual air temperatures. You saw that Billings, we bottomed out there at about 25 degrees below zero. And again, these are the actual air temperatures, not the wind chill. I'll show you the wind chill in just one second. Rapid City, Bismarck. 15 below, 14 degrees below zero. Again, in Rapid City, Sunday, there's lunchtime. This is lunchtime. So again, we're close to peak heating of the afternoon, and we're still talking about actual air temperatures. Minus eight in Kansas City, eight degrees below zero in the Twin Cities, 14 below in Rapid City, Billings. We're still chilling at 17 below, and then that cold continues to march east. So places like Pittsburgh are going to struggle, uh, likely going to bottom out in the single digits or teens uh, early Monday morning. Buffalo, 14 degrees. Also a big playoff game in Buffalo. Could be really, really windy as the Steelers take on the Bills. Wild card weekend, as is typical, getting impacted by winter. Again, it's the benefits of winning your division and playing at home anyway where you are used to. I'm calling you guys out again, Miami. All you had to do was win one game, and it would have been 70 degrees for your game. And now you're going to freeze at 17 degrees below with the wind. All right. Future wind chill. This is a whole other level. I want to point this out before we start. The color table here is set to 50 degrees below zero. So where you see the earth kind of showing through that is the wind chill in excess of negative 50. And we see that popping up in the mountains there of Montana. Those are the wind chills that even get even colder and colder as we get into Saturday morning. Look at this, 11 o'clock Saturday morning, 42 degrees below zero with the wind, 34 below in Billings. That's in Bismarck, by the way. Rapid City, we're going to be 32 below. Uh, Kansas City, again, this is going to be Saturday at 11 o'clock. The game kickoff is at uh, just at 7 o'clock, and you saw the wind chill go below 20 degrees below zero during the game. It is going to be a frigid, frigid game. So there we go. Wind chill in Pittsburgh. Lunchtime, Sunday, seven above, six above in Buffalo, 26 degrees below zero. Uh, the only spot that is missing out on the deep freeze right now, look at this, 57 degrees in Orlando, Florida. It's cool for Floridians, uh, but it is going to be much, much warmer than everywhere else across the country. All right. So the serious side of this system and this is kind of the latest update here from the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, the, one of the things that this is going to be lacking, thankfully, is instability. If we have the jet stream dynamics, but we are significantly lacking instability. Earlier, over the past couple of days, this was all marked in that level three out of five. Uh, again, still the opportunity for a significant severe weather in this area where we have that two out of five. Uh, but the enhanced risk area has uh, been trimmed back into Mississippi and into Alabama. Marginal risk for Orlando, a slight risk for the Florida Panhandle that unfortunately was devastated by some strong tornadoes just the other day. So we're back under the gun for more severe weather uh, on Friday when it comes to that. Um, and again, that severe weather threat is going to stay with us. Now, the other good thing here, relatively speaking, okay, 
is that uh, earlier in the outlooks here, there were significant, um, there was a 10% hatched area. Hatched, again, meaning that we, the, or the Storm Prediction Center, they're the one that issues these, but when they hatch it, it means that there's the opportunity for significant tornadoes. And that still could be, but on a much lower scale. So again, I don't want anybody to let their guard down in here. But the positive is, I think due to the lack of instability, even though we have this dynamic system, if you don't have the ingredients for the storms to grow big and strong and big and tall, it's difficult for the storms to take advantage of all of the jet stream dynamics that the atmosphere is giving it so while that certainly again we had that five percent shot for the tornado anywhere to happen in this area area in that brown shaded area it is better looking than what it was because I, things are coming into more detail as they typically do as we get closer to an event uh that would suggest that we are going to be lacking some ingredients we still have some that is why we still have that level two out of five take this seriously have all the warnings all that stuff ready to go or have the ability to get those warnings but again slightly more positive news uh to pass along to you even though the storm is going to be so big and so dynamic Alrighty, guys thanks so much for tuning in let me know where you're tuning in from if you're getting snow let me know if you're excited or not excited post that in the comments and we will catch you next time